Thanks a lot, Bernd. Uh, you can see this now? Yeah, that's good. Okay, great. Um, so my name is David Egan. I'm the, the uh, CEO of Core Life Analytics. And uh, Core Life Analytics was uh, founded in order uh, to uh, help with this problem. And so what we had seen was that more and more biologists, is my audio quality okay? I'm getting a bit fuzz in my headphones. It's fine. It's a little bit fuzzy, but we hear you okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Um, so uh, we was founded to help solve uh, this problem. So what we had seen was that a lot of biologists were uh, generating um, ever more complex data sets. And uh, this was especially true in the area of high content analysis. And of course, once these biologists had generated these large amounts of uh, numeric data, uh, to use a term that uh, Mark Bickle uh, used uh, uh, recently in, in a meeting with us, you know, they, they're trying to craft knowledge from this data. Now, the problem is, is that, you know, many of you, of course, are very familiar with the tools that, you know, data scientists, many of you are hardcore data scientists uh, who would use to work on these large numeric data sets or Python, uh, maybe nine pipelines, and of course, databases to keep track of everything. But the problem is, is that there are far more people actually generating this data, I think, than there are people who can actually do the analysis. And so that is why we uh, developed a tool called Stratominer. And the idea of Stratominer is that it uh, is a web-based tool that is designed to help biologists to analyze uh, these high content data sets. And uh, it's a web-based tool that walks them through uh, this workflow and helps them to use you know, best practices in their data analysis so, so they can you know, relieve some of these bottlenecks, data analysis bottlenecks, and actually understand more about the data that they're generating. So it helps with the data wrangling. You can import numeric data from you know, all the major image analysis uh, uh, platforms. And uh, we help them quickly to, let's say, throw out the garbage, uh, uniform features, features that are uh, very highly redundant across the data set. And then they can merge uh, metadata from outside, or they can identify metadata from within their data sets. And then this can be used for various purposes. One thing it can be used for is to uh, build complex plate maps. And this is extremely useful of when people are doing assay development and assay validation. Also, of course, it can be used uh, it, with the interactive data visualizations that we build in, in order to filter, sort, uh, um, look at what's happening to different types of classes of, of wells, and we can also allow them to define in a visual way new classes. And so in, in this early stage, they can get a really good handle on the quality of the data, see if there are problems in the data, even with you know, large complex data sets like uh, those from cell painting. Uh, once they've done that, then we help them uh, to, again, to use uh, best practices. Uh, if they want to do real multi-parametric analysis, we help them to normalize the data, uh, do transformations, scale the data, and then they can move on to dimensionality reduction, things like principal component analysis or common factor analysis. They can then use their uh, uh, reduced data and explore the, the space and explore various different, uh, let's say, known phenotypes that they have in the data, see how that looks with the unknown phenotypes. Uh, and then this is again with more of this kind of interactive uh, data visualizations. And then they can use, calculate distance scores to identify outliers, uh, phenotypes, uh, calculate distances, let's say from the negative controls or from uh, other defined controls. You can see here these various different classes have, have different colors, and these are classes that have been defined in the plate maps or, or through the, uh, the analysis in the inter interactive data visualizations. Then once they've identified certain interesting phenotypes, they can carry out uh, clustering. Now, if they have cell level data, uh, we allow them to build machine learning models, uh, and these can be built using classes defined, again, in their plate maps, those various different color-coded uh, wells can be used to define uh, machine learning uh, models. Um, so what we really feel is that with Stratominer, what we're doing is we're kind of helping uh, many biologists to complete the, the HCA pipeline. Uh, 
And the same person who's doing, let's say, the image acquisition and feature extraction uh, with you know, image, image analysis tools can then go on and mine the data and learn a lot more about their data sets uh, without having to, uh, uh, to go to a, a, a data scientist. And then if they have more complex questions, they understand a lot more about their data before they go to a, a, a data scientist. One thing we feel as well that this really helps to uh, biologists to build uh, better um, high content assays uh, that, that you know gives better quality data. Um, we deliver uh, the product as a, a cloud-based service using a subscription model. Here are some of our uh, of our customers who are currently using it. Uh, it's also being uh, successfully used uh, in academic groups. Here are a couple of papers that were recently published. One from uh, Neil Carrer's group at the University of Edinburgh, and another one from Johnny Sexton at uh, the University of Michigan. And so in summary, what it is, as I said, it's a tool that's built for biologists. We really think that it can accelerate uh, the development and, and the use of high content um, uh, methods uh, for people who uh, you know, want to be able to analyze their, their own data. Now, if anyone's interested in uh, getting access and trying out the platform, uh, they can just go to our uh, website at corelifeanalytics.com and we have a team who are uh, you know ready to help people get started and, and uh, Victor Wong and Christian Ramakers uh, are very uh, happy uh, to get online with a call and, and uh, get people going with that. So with that uh, yeah I'd like to thank you for your attention and uh, be happy to address any questions in the uh, question answer session. Thanks very much again for uh, the opportunity to present.